Hey guys, Nintendrew here. The Nintendo DS was a fairly groundbreaking system, especially with its introduction of dual displays and touchscreen input to the mainstream market. But apparently Nintendo and a few third-party developers weren't entirely satisfied, so we as gamers got some interesting accessories to help expand the system's capabilities. Today, we're going to take a look at some of these somewhat obscure and unique peripherals you may have forgotten about. So, let's get to it. Alright, our first DS peripheral is this guy, the Nintendo Wireless Keyboard. This keyboard was exclusively packaged with a, an educational title exclusive to Europe and Japan called Learn with Pokemon Typing Adventure. As the name might suggest, this game was meant to help kids learn how to type through more than 60 stages of exercises in which the player has to enter certain names or phrases within a time limit to capture Pokemon. The gameplay almost reminds me a little bit of uh, Pokemon Snap with its on-rails progression. Now what I find kind of funny about this game is that if you take a look at the back of the box, it actually has a special icon which indicates that this software is compatible with the Nintendo wireless keyboard, despite the fact that this is the only game that used it. So that's interesting to me that they went to the trouble to make its own special icon. So here it is. It is not quite like a full-size keyboard, but it is a pretty good size. And it actually comes with a little stand as well so that you can prop up your DS while you're playing. Now what's interesting about this keyboard is that it's actually running on Bluetooth, so you can use this with your computer or with your cell phone, uh, but the original DS doesn't have Bluetooth, so how does it work? Well, the Pokemon Typing Adventure cartridge actually has a built-in Bluetooth adapter which allows the DS to connect to the keyboard. And as far as I know, this is the only DS game to have that sort of functionality. Alright, next up we have one which might be a little bit more familiar to you guys. This is the Guitar Hero On Tour Guitar Grip. This one is probably the most recognizable one of the bunch because uh, it is fairly cheap and you can see it in a lot of bargain bins at local game stores. So basically the concept is that you pop it into your DS Lite through the Game Boy Advance cartridge slot and then it acts as a portable version of a traditional Guitar Hero controller which is compatible with the Guitar Hero On Tour set of games for DS. Of course, this controller does have four buttons rather than the traditional five on a normal Guitar Hero controller. And this one only works with the DS Lite. This will not work with any other model of DS because uh, the controller itself is so shallow that it, it's, it's only designed for the DS Lite. It won't work in the original and of course, the DSi took out the Game Boy Advance slot. But for what it's worth, I think it was a respectable effort to try to bring that Guitar Hero experience on the go. It can get a little cramped if you're playing for more than a few songs at a time, but all in all, it's a pretty well-designed accessory. And it even comes with a little stylus shaped like a pick that fits right into the side here. So that's a nice little touch. Okay, next up I've got the Nintendo DS Rumble Pack. Of course, the DS didn't have any sort of rumble feature out of the box, so much like the N64 accessory of the same name, this peripheral aimed to add that sort of feedback with an external plugin. This is actually the first Nintendo DS accessory to use the Game Boy Advance slot, and Nintendo called these DS Option Packs. This peripheral was first sold in a bundle with Metroid Prime Pinball before being made available on its own. Now this one will work with either an original DS or a DS Lite because it is shaped like an original Game Boy Advance cartridge. So of course it fits in just perfectly to the original DS, and it will also work just fine in the DS Lite. Other than Metroid Prime Pinball, there are just over 30 titles which supported the Rumble Pack, including Star Fox Command, Mario & Luigi Partners in Time, and Sonic & Sega All-Stars Racing. But Rumble Pack support was noticeably absent from big system sellers like New Super Mario Bros., uh, The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass, and the Pokemon RPG titles, uh, which is likely why it ended up falling into obscurity. Now, I've never actually played with the, the Rumble Pack before, so I'm gonna boot up Star Fox Command and we're gonna see what the, uh, what the effect is like. Whoa. <laughs> The rumble effect is actually a lot stronger than I would have expected it to be. I'm surprised it's able to, to have that much force without its own built-in battery, because it's, it's just running off the power of the Game Boy Advance slot, so that's kind of interesting. Oh man, the boost especially. It's like rattling the entire DS. Here, listen to this. That, that's the sound of the DS rattling. That's kind of funny. <laughs> okay, next up we've got the Nintendo DS Memory Expansion Pack. And much like the Rumble Pack, this one might remind you of a very similar accessory for the Nintendo 64. Much like its N64 counterpart, this DS Option Pack adds some extra RAM to the DS system, uh, although in this case it's 8 megabytes as opposed to the N64's 4 megabytes. While the N64 Expansion Pack allowed games to run at a higher resolution or with better textures or more content, the Nintendo DS Expansion Pack was used for only one game, or more accurately one app, the Nintendo DS Browser. 
This separate piece of software gave users access to the web at a time when this sort of functionality was just being experimented with for handheld game systems. There were actually two different versions of the DS expansion pack, and you can tell that this version was meant for the DS Lite, and it's almost identical to the dust cover that came with the system. But there was also a larger version for the original DS. Now in North America, it was only available by mail order, so it's much harder to come by than the DS Lite version. And because it is a slot to peripheral, the DS expansion pack cannot be used with the DSi or any other model of DS. Uh, but of course, by the time the DSi came out, it had more RAM than a DS Lite with the expansion pack combined, and it had its own browser software built in, so uh, it kind of made the DS browser obsolete. And finally, I have one more peripheral to mention here. Uh, I actually don't have this one on hand. It is a Japanese exclusive, but it is the Facening Scan Camera. I mentioned this briefly in my video on DSi exclusive games. This was a camera peripheral for the DS, which was launched with a game called Face Training, which was originally a Japanese exclusive DS game before it eventually got a DSi port in Europe. This title was marketed towards adult women and promised to help relax and tone the user's facial muscles as a smaller, more feminine face is often considered more desirable in Japanese culture. The software would capture the user's expressions with the facening scan camera, and interpret facial features to give the player real-time pointers and determine if they're following the exercise correctly. To me, it seems like a shame that such a versatile accessory was only used for one game. But of course, once the DSi came out, it had its own built-in cameras and also made the DS camera obsolete, so it's no wonder that it never saw a worldwide release. Okay guys, that's about it for this one. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please do consider subscribing to Nintendo for all sorts of cool gaming content, and make sure to share the video with any friends who might find it interesting. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye! Hey guys, thanks again for checking out the video and for making it all the way to the end. Hope you enjoyed. As always, I've got links to all my social media in the description below. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Discord, that sort of thing. And if you'd like to help out even more, I've got a link to my Patreon on the right side of your screen. Otherwise, I hope you'll look out for the next video. Take care.